And with that, God is moving and the voice of heaven is being released on lines around the earth. See, that's what Psalms 19 says. All of a sudden, I was enough in a spirit realm that the line about Scranton might not could have been heard here, but it could have been heard in my prayer room where I was. And then the voice of that has to get to you to say, move it forward. Now, that's what our war is over. Go ahead, Aaron, and let's look at this. Now, so Scranton, Pennsylvania becomes the place of revival, the crossroads of revelation, uh, revolution. It becomes some key factor in the way America goes for its future. And without you gathering here, without pioneering and being a part and pressing through the remnant coming together to come together in a gathering here, we could not see America advance or have faith for it to advance, to advance the way the Lord intends us to have as we go into this war ahead. The war will intensify intensify by October. Now, with that, you have to know you have a portion. That's what inheritance means. And with that portion, you have to learn to encircle your portion. And you have to learn to establish your portion. There's ladies here from Florida. They have to go back to, from New York, their roots were in New York. So they came to this meeting. They live now in Florida. They're going to take the anointing from this meeting back to Florida. See? You will take the anointing from this meeting back to Massachusetts, back to Texas. I had to come here to get the anointing you have to bring back for me to propel myself with him into the future. See, I couldn't do that without pressing through to get here with you. And once we start seeing this the way God sees it from heaven, all of a sudden we all have a great importance about us. Look at somebody next to you and say, you're more important than you know. But you also have to know that religious, passive, stubborn structures are going to resist this new day of celebration. Not everybody is as excited about this meeting as you are. And I don't want you leaving here thinking, oh, how everybody's just going to be waiting for me to tell them about what we've just done. That is not how it works in reality. From one who has been to so many places and experienced so many things bad that I know. So it's, it's really key that we advance into this season. Now, with that, as we move forward, you have to understand, here's our call. There's two things that has been prophesied that we are walking out in the Word of God. One was when Peter finally got it, after three years being with the Lord uh, and being disip discipled. That's what a disciple is, one that is being taught. And he finally got it, and when they were at Caesarea Philippi, all of a sudden he taps in when Yeshua asks him, people, there's a lot of people talking about me out there. What are they saying about me? And they said, well, first of all, they think you've been reincarnated and you were Elijah. 
or one of the prophets. He said, well, what are you saying about me? And all of a sudden, Peter, who, biggest mess in the earth, (laughs) poke somebody next to you. I mean, tell them. If Peter can get it, any of us can get it. Now, I'm telling you. (laughs) Peter. All right. They named him John, but we know. (laughs) But (laughs) it's like Peter Roselli and John Price. Something switched, you know. (laughs) Uh, Because John John got it a lot. But Peter finally got it. And Peter said, "Uh, you're the Mashat, the Messiah, the anointed one we've been watching for all these years, waiting for 400 years. It's been told to me, uh, uh, my family, that you would come. And you're here. And the Lord looked at him and said, only the Father could have revealed that to you. And there's Jody right there from New York. Great. And what What happens with Revelation is it uncovers, where occult covers over. And so every time God speaks, something's being uncovered, see. Something's being ripped off of your life personally, of the territory you're living in, of the people group you're a part of. I don't think I could have come into the fullness of my call without first being called back to the first people that my grandmother and great-grandmother were part of. And every time I could hear God about it, a layer would come off my bloodline. See, that's how it works for you. Every time you hear God, something's coming out of your blood that's causing the Spirit to gain more access to you. And, and in the midst of it, all of a sudden, uh, Peter says, this is who you are. And the Lord prophesies, and he said, upon this rock, I will build my church. Upon this Petrus, it's the same word that Pierce comes from, Peter. Upon this Petros, I will build my church, my ecclesia. And the gates of hell will not be able to withstand it. And you will get the keys and be given authority to bind and to lose. That means to forbid or permit. You will get the keys to unlock the kingdom. So now in the midst of this call, we have to say, how is the kingdom coming fully into Scranton? And how is the kingdom going to move from Scranton out through America? Because, see, it's those two dimensions that are still working in us as his disciples. 